Ready? Okay, let's keep moving. Now we're going to, in this video, describe the muscles that move the arm. So these muscles are crossing the shoulder joint and they attach to the humerus and they're going to move the arm regardless of the position of the forearm. We're just concentrating our attention into the shoulder joint. Now, if a muscle, remember, this is from your lecture, if a muscle is crossing the shoulder joint anteriorly, when you pull it, it's going to flex the arm. If the muscle is going to, uh, is located or is crossing the joint posteriorly, is going to extend the arm at the shoulder. If the muscle is crossing the shoulder joint laterally, okay, um, it's going to, when you contract it, woo, you pull it and now you're going to abduct the arm. If this muscle is crossing the joint medially, okay, now when you pull it, woo, when you contract it, you're going to adduct. The arm, right? So let's keep that in mind. Depending on the position of the muscle or how the muscle crosses the articulation, anteriorly, posteriorly, lateral, or medially, uh, that's what's going to um, define or um, dictate the movement at that joint. Okay? Another thing, remember. Please, all my students, when you refer to a movement, you need to say flexion of blah, 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 extension of blah, blah, blah. If you say to me flexion, well, that, that muscle flexes. You're not saying anything. You're not giving me any information, okay? So you need to tell me, well, it flexes the arm or it flexes uh, the humerus, or reflexes the forearm, or reflexes the elbow, okay, or reflexes the forearm at the elbow, even better, okay, so only naming the movement is wrong, don't do it, okay, let's keep moving, now, what are the movements of the arm, what do we have, we just described them, right, we can flex the arm, that is flexion, look, all the muscles are look, ah, let me go back. Okay, all the muscles are located anteriorly. See, the one that are flexing the arm, muscles are crossing the joint anteriorly. Extension of the arm, all the muscles are crossing the joint posteriorly. Abduction, laterally, muscles, or adduction, medially located the muscles. Then medial rotation and well, medial rotation again and lateral rotation. We're missing a, mu a muscle in there. Lateral rotation. Okay, ready? Again, rewind if you need to. Master those movements. Perform the movements. When you're performing the movement, boom. Home. <laughs> put your hand at the shoulder so you can feel the shoulder movement moving in flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation feel the that that's the joint that is moving okay so let's start I'm kind of in the middle but find a way Okay, let's start describing all of those muscles. How do we do this? Well, I'm gonna work with half of the body in this, okay, in this app. So we can see the table, you can see the table at the time I describe the muscles. So we, okay, look how I organize the muscles. All of these, the muscles in this table are crossing the shoulder joint. Well, actually all the muscles in this video. But in here, we're going to describe, we're going to go around the muscle, the joint, around the shoulder joint, okay? So we're going to describe first the muscles that cross the joint medially, then the muscles that cross the joint anteriorly, then we move and we're going to describe the muscles crossing the joint laterally, 
and then finally the muscles to cross to join posteriorly okay so that's what we're going to do and we're going to start that's why i put the first muscle in here behind me it says coracobrachialis coracobrachialis do you remember coracoid process that's what i thought and that's what i brought this image oh no well one second that is loading okay now mm, can you really see it here yes this is your scapula right and this finger-like projection that's your coracoid process that pointing is pointing uh, anteriorly okay so clavicle scapula humerus this is the coracoid process this is a chromium process okay that was just as a review now in the muscles we're going to describe the coracobrachialis five seconds to load okay coracobrachialis not there dude i don't want to see that okay <clears throat> to see the coracobrachialis that of course goes from the coracoid process to brachium where it, where is the bone of the brachium to humerus so it's going from the coracoid process, coracoid process of the scapula to the uh, humerus of to the humerus so i need to remove a layer i removed pectoralis major and now i can see the coracoid process can you see it right there coracoid process so this one is pectoralis minor pectoralis minor so this is not this one do you think it's this one ah pay attention no this muscle has two heads one and two see two two fascicles two two portions so that's not the muscle that's the biceps brachii so let's remove it and then i keep seeing here the coracoid process and and i follow the muscle and attaches to the humerus mid, -sha mid shaft on the humerus that's your coracobrachialis muscle okay coracobrachialis muscle so when i move insertion towards the origin what do you think see that the muscle is crossing medially the joint so i'm going to adopt the arm okay since it's kind of anteriorly located also uh it can also flex the arm so two actions flexes and adopt the arm okay the innervation is given by the musculocutaneous nerve now musculocutaneous you will see it will innervate the coracobrachialis and all the muscles located in the anterior uh, anterior to the humerus okay um what else next muscle pectoralis major so i need to add all the layers again because this is the most superficial muscle okay and this one you're going to see that crosses the uh, shoulder joint anteriorly okay so what action do you think is going to perform is the prime mover of that flexion of the arm so look let's pay attention to the origins this is the pectoralis major in here i have the clavicle right so the sternal end of the clavicle here i have the sternum originates on the sternum in here i have costal cartilages maybe ribs one through six one through seven uh costal cartilages and from there originates also what is this this is the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle remember this is a convergent type of muscle very powerful muscle because the orientation uh, uh, of the fibers you know it's a broad origin and inserts right here into the do you remember into the greater tubercle and intertubercle sulcus of the humerus so again here is the humerus um, and okay this is the greater tubercle and in, or in the anterior and or in the anterior aspect of the intertubercular sulcus so what do you think we can do with this muscle when we move the insertion towards the origin maybe in a lateral plane it's going to be easier to understand 
uh, the insertion is about here. The origin, well, you know, is towards the front. So when I move this, I can flex the arm at the shoulder, okay? It also can perform adu uh, yeah, adduction and medial rotation. What is the innervation of the pectoralis major? Uh, mm, mm, ah, pectoral nerves, okay? So pectoral nerves innervate pectoralis minor and pectoralis major. Next muscle, deltoid. Oh, I don't know why, but I love this muscle. Okay, deltoid. So we're moving, we're in the muscles that cross, they're crossing the joint anteriorly. The deltoid crosses the joint anteriorly, laterally, and posteriorly. Look at this. Origin. Look at the muscle in here. This is the deltoid. This is the pectoralis major. So pectoralis major attaches in the, or originates in the external end of the clavicle. The deltoid originates in the acromial end of the clavicle, okay? That's the anterior origin. Posteriorly, it originates in the spine of the scapula and in the cromial process. And from there, from all of those, this is a lateral view from the clavicle and from the spine of the scapula and acromion, it um, inserts in a tuberosity that is on the humerus. I forgot how it's called. Oh, oh, deltoid tuberosity. Okay, so let, I'm gonna put a lateral view, maybe like, yeah, like that. That's a lateral view, and I'm gonna draw my, see, this is the clavicle in this uh, acromial end, in the acromion, and in the spine that is behind there, okay? So from there, all the fibers converge, and they attach right here. That's insertion, that's your deltoid tuberosity. So when you contract that muscle, well, we have different fibers, right? So if you contract uh, uh, origin, these are the origin, this is the insertion, right? If you contract all the muscle at once, or even only the middle fibers in here, okay, you can lift your arm. So you're going to abduct the arm. If you contract only, and you can do that, if you contract the anterior fibers, you're going to flex the arm at the shoulder, okay? And medial rotation as well. If you contract now the posterior deltoid or the posterior fibers of the deltoid, you're going to, what do you think? Extend, because it's crossing the joint posteriorly. So it extends the arm at the shoulder and also can perform lateral rotation. A little bit of lateral rotation. Um, that's it. Uh, what is the innervation? Axillary nerve. Did we mention already? No, teres minor. Okay, axillary nerve. That's it. Okay, now we are now in the posterior muscles that cross the joint posteriorly, right? Delta part that crosses the joint also posteriorly. So in here we're going to describe the latissimus dorsi and the teres major. And look at this tiny little muscle. Can you see that? All of these is the latissimus dorsi and the proud teres major. Teres major is always helping the latissimus dorsi. Like it needs any help, right? So let's see the origins of latissimus dorsi. It, in here we are about the last thoracic vertebrae, right? So last in the spinous processes of the last thoracic vertebrae, all the lumbar vertebrae. What else do you see in here? Well, in here I can see the sacrum, the iliac, I'm sorry, the iliac crest, some of the ribs in here. And from here, all the fibers ascend or go on a diagonal, I mean on, on a horizontal plane, to insert almost at the same place where the pectoralis major uh, inserts. I'll, sh I'll show you in a while. And the... Oh, okay, I hope I didn't do that before because I was not seeing, but okay, I mark all the insertions in uh, origins in here 
right in the last uh, thoracic in all the lumbar in here we have the iliac crest and some of the ribs so from there all the fibers ascend or go on a horizontal to attach in the intertubercular sulcus of the uh, of the humerus okay I'll tell you exactly where in a minute and this is the teres my a major the one that is right superior to the don't get confused because there are two muscles okay so one and two right so this one the one that is right superior to the latissimus dorsi that's major teres major and originates in the inferior angle of the scapula and the uh, posteriorly and attaches almost with the latissimus dorsi in the lesser tubercle of the humerus now let me show you that in here can you see my okay mm. what is my problem okay so hey stop it we're posterior in here you know what i'm gonna do let's see if with the one in this side we can see it better yes i think we can okay okay so um We're in the posterior aspect so the latissimus dorsi right it comes from all of those origins in here right that big muscle and all the fibers ascend and attach right here into the intertubercular sulcus so if you remember in the intertubercular sulcus inserts also the pectoralis major. The thing is that in the posterior border of the intertubercular sulcus you fall, you'll find uh, latissimus dorsi and in the anterior border of the uh, intertubercular sulcus is the pectoralis major. So pectoralis major flexes the latissimus dorsi extends uh, the arm of the shoulder. And in here, posteriorly, I'm gonna draw the teres major. What it does is here in the inferior angle of the scapula, the posterior surface, in originating there and attaches, well, down here, okay, in the lesser tubercle of the humerus. From here to here, this is the lesser, the one in the front, right? So, like that. So. Again, when you contract, you can extend uh, the arm at the shoulder. Innervation of latissimus dorsi, thoracodorsal nerve, uh, and the teres major lower subscapular nerve. Okay, that part, guys, I'm sorry. Memorization. Now, we're going to describe shortly the muscles of the rotator cuff. Okay, and we have this mnemonic to remember the muscles of the uh, rotator cuff which is six so s stands for supraspinatus i infraspinatus t is a lower t lower case t because this tear is minor and not major this is the one that we just described right this is teres major and this is latissimus dorsi not part of the rotator cuff and the last s is subscapularis that is located anterior in the anterior surface of the scapula not anterior, uh, posteriorly like the rest but anteriorly now the functions at the name says rotator cuff of most all of these muscles except one is to rotate the arm at the shoulder so medial rotation lateral rotation okay now the muscles except all of these muscles rotate the arm at the shoulder except the first s which is the supraspinatus. But it is considered part of the rotator cuff muscles because another function of these muscles is to protect 
okay, or, or providing stability to the glenohumeral joint. Uh, so the muscles are going to, uh, they span the articulation, they're attaching one side of the humerus and then the other side of the scapula, and they see how they're wrapping the entire uh, humerus and scapula, keeping together the head of the humerus in the shallow glenoid uh, cavity or glenoid fossa of the scapula. So it's reinforcing, it's stabilizing this already weak joint uh, that is the shoulder or glenoid humeral joint. Uh, so the supraspinatus, even though it does not rotate the shoulder, it provides a great deal of stability to this joint. If we didn't have supraspinatus, for example, when we were carrying a heavy item, a, 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 a bag on the side of your body like that, okay, if it's too heavy, it will pull down the weight of the bag, will pull down the head, the humerus, and it will dislocate. It will bring out of the glenoid cavity. The, the, it will bring the head of the humerus out of the uh, gl glenoid cavity, and that's a shoulder dislocation. Okay, so appreciate your rotator cuff muscles. Now, let's describe these muscles. Sorry for that. I'm going to bring back muscle man. And we're going to the other app. Okay. We start with supraspinatus. Okay, look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, supraspinatus. I'm going to remove this layer where I can see the uh, trapezius and latissimus dorsi. So I remove trapezius. I can still see uh, latissimus dorsi and teres major. Okay, I please don't get confused in this muscles. Let me describe these ones. Okay, so this is latissimus dorsi, this is teres major, okay? Those are not the ones I'm going to describe. One, supraspinatus. <laughs> Where do you think it originates? The supraspinous fossa. Supraspinous fossa to greater tubercle of the humerus. All of them, except one, okay, originate on the greater tubercle of the humerus. So, Supraspinatus from the infraspinous fossa to the greater tubercle of the humerus. Teres minor from the medial border, I'm sorry, from the lateral border here of the scapula to the teres, I'm sorry, to the greater tubercle. So the three of them, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres uh, minor, they originate in the greater tubercle of, I'm sorry, they insert in the greater tubercle of the humerus. Uh, I was going to tell you, oh, look please and pay attention again that we have two terrace, terrace minor and major. Remember, minor on top of the major. Now, these muscles, let's describe the action of these muscles. The supraspinatus, what it does, see that it's crossing the joint laterally to insert in here. So what it does is initiate abduction. Okay, so the first, the first angle of abduction is, is produced by the contraction of the supraspinatus. And then the deltoid takes place in that movement. Now, see, it doesn't rotate, but it provides a stability to the joint. Now, both infraspinatus and teres minor, they are going to both, when they contract, they move the insertion towards the origin so they can perform lateral rotation, okay? Uh, subscapularis is not posterior muscle. It's located in the front. To see that, I'm going to remove this layer so we can kind of see it because it's not so easy to see that muscle. Hey, stop it. Okay. Are we oriented in there? Yes, we are. Okay, this is the subscapular fossa of the scapula. That's the subscapularis muscle. And sub, do you remember sub, like subtraction, is the only one that inserts in the lesser tubercle. Good way to remember. 
subtraction, lesser, okay? So subscapularis, the only one of the rotator cuff muscles of in the anterior, crossing the joint anteriorly, is the only one that is certain the lesser tubercle of the humerus, and it's the only one that medially rotates the arm of this group of muscles. So this is kind of a unique muscle, okay? So insert right here in the um, uh, lesser tubercle of the humerus, and when we contract and move closer together the insertion towards the origin, we medially rotate the arm at the shoulder. The, well, in here you have the innervations, the first two, the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus, they are innervated by the suprascapular nerve. Teres minor is innervated by the axillary nerve together with a uh, uh, deltoid and subscapularis with a subscapular nerve, okay? Now, I know these videos are kind of long, guys, but it's easier for me to group them in just one video. Let's review movements of the arm at the shoulder, okay? So flexion in the anterior uh, uh, plane, right? Uh, extension, this is abduction away from your body, adduction, bring it back to your body, medial rotation towards your um, uh, body and lateral rotation away from your body. The combination of flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction creates circumduction, which is like this, making a loop, okay? Um, mm. What else? Last but not least, this is a group of muscles that we described in this video, all of this, and these are the movements that we described. So flexion of the arm at the shoulder, okay? These muscles are crossing the joint anteriorly. So the major, the prime mover in here is the pectoralis major, but also the anterior fibers of the deltoid. Uh, coracobrachialis, yeah, I forgot, is also uh, a synergist on arm flexion. Now, extension of the arm of the shoulder, they need to cross the, the joint posteriorly, so we're not gonna find them in this picture, we need another one. So, in here we have the latissimus dorsi, and the posterior fibers of the deltoid muscle. Whenever you name uh, latissimus dorsi, name also teres major. They are like this, okay? The teres major is only a synergist. Now, what else? Abduction. So who initiates abduction? Supraspinatus, and then deltoid takes place of that movement, uh, takes charge of that movement. Then adduction of the arm of the shoulder. So this muscle has to cross the joint medially, right? So in here we have uh, pectoralis major and the synergist of that is uh, the coracobrachialis anteriorly and posteriorly we have the latissimus dorsi with the teres major. Now, medial rotation of the arm, which is the only muscle that can do that. Subscapularis uh, down here, can you see it? subscapularis and lateral rotation of the arm is performed by, and we need another picture, the infraspinatus and the teres minor. Infraspinatus and teres minor, okay? So, see you in the next video. We're going to describe the muscles of the forearm. Now, crossing the elbow. See you!